Hello. Hi, friends. So um, if you are new, welcome. If you're returning, thanks for being here. So I've been listening to several different videos and takes on women promoting abstinence um, and maybe even celibacy for some of them. And so I want to share with you my theory that I believe you can take the principles of abstinence and apply it outside of being abstinent. So that's why I'm going to um, just talk out loud with you guys today because it's definitely been circulating my mind for quite some time. So to start, I think that the practice of abstinence is a good idea in a lot of ways. I think it's a solid approach and I think it's a really good strategy. So let's talk about some of the components that make it so. A lot of what this is based on is the principle of respect. And once again, how important this is like to the masculine and the masculine framework. So there's a couple of things that make this really clear, right? We care and have more respect for things that we've worked for. So if there is some sort of like daily deposit or investment of time, energy, money, emotions, like, like mental capacity you're giving to it, you're going to hold it. It's going to mean more to you. It's going to mean more to you because you are giving yourself to it, right? So, and sometimes you're giving like yourself in ways where it's like, okay, yeah, this is, this is challenging for me or like, uh, you know, I, I'm in a pinch, but I'm going to do it anyway. And I think that one of the best comparisons I could make is there's a lot of criticism we have on like the new, what are they? The Gen Z? Is there something after the Gen Z? <laughs> um, but how they like, they don't care. Things don't mean anything. They don't know what hard work is. Right. But it's just because they live in a world that's automated. They live in a world with like one day delivery. They live in a world where you can like put food on your phone. Someone will bring it right to your doorstep. So the reason they're operating this way and the reason people have this criticism is because there is little to no like work or investment for the outcome they're looking for, right? Like you just have to go on your phone, you choose, you select, you tip. Okay, you go on Amazon, like you go to school, they're going to do it for you. If you have a question, you go to Google, get an answer in half a second, right? So you have to understand that the reason we're relating to one another in the world differently is because of the automation. We don't have as much respect for the environment because we're just looking at doing things quickly, right? So I think of in the instance of <laughs> if you order Ikea furniture, you're probably, you know, going to be a little bit more rough and tumble play with it, right? Like it's not going to be a big deal if you have to replace it. Um, you may not care if the screws are incorrect, right? These sorts of things. But if you go to your grandmother's house and she has a china cabinet that was handmade and in those plates were hand decorated flowers that were passed down from her mother, you're going to interact with that piece of furniture differently, right? There's, there's more substance to it because there was more investment in it. Does that make sense? So when we're thinking about abstinence, what is going on, once again, this, you know, relationship between pursuit of sex and the, you know, desire for commitment, right? We're having this negotiation with one another is if you're practicing abstinence, the idea is that in order for you to receive this experience, there's going to have to be these levels of investments that are made because it's not accessible to you. It's not automated. It's not automatic, right? Like there is a series of events. And I think if we're being very honest with ourselves, at least I can say for me and people in my world, the things that you are most proud of the things that you remember very clearly were the the instances, the times that you overcame. It's those stories, right, that took showing up, that took the trials, took the errors, that, you know, took the mess ups, falling down, getting up, 
right? All of, all of those human experiences is what we actually connect with and what we remember and what we feel the best for, the most proud of. So when it comes to hoarding and sex, that principle is there, right? So that all makes really good sense. The other thing I think is really important is not as much in the U.S., but in other cultures, there is a vetting of men, right? So in the ideal scenario, the men on the woman's side is able to once again have some sort of um, say or basically like we can check, we can vet the man who is of interest. And why is this powerful? Because in the masculine world, to be a man of respect, basically to be respected by other men is to be a man. It does not mean the same thing if when, if if men don't respect you. If you're a man and other men don't respect you, like I don't know if we can consider you a man. You know what I'm saying? Because women, and this is where it gets interesting, women can adore you, like women can even respect you or women can like love or appreciate you. But the woman is not qualified to hand out the man card. Other men do that, right? And and as a man, you're using your metric, not based off of women, but you're using your metric based on other men. So when it comes to courting and abstaining from sex, part of the process in the ideal world is that there are men who care for the woman who are basically making sure that you're like up to snuff, that you are a man of respect, right? And there are some things um, and this may be, it's not maybe, this is traditional, but I agree with it, where the masculine opinion holds more weight or is more clear than the feminine opinion, right, of the man. Like, I think we each have our own places of that. So the third thing of abstaining and the components of respect is back to the conversation of a container. So the man is the one who creates the containment for the woman, like the feminine to blossom, right? So he does this tangibly. This is where things get like, you know, a little tricky, like in the Middle East, from um, what I've learned from some teachers and just some personal friends is that the judgment of how, you know, good a husband is, is how radiant his wife is. So there's this relationship there that he is able to have a containment and sustain the woman's brightness, the woman's glow, the woman like being a woman. So what's powerful is that in marriage, there is a solid container that's set. This container is being witnessed by other people. This container is saying, I, as a man, am going to give you a promise and other people are listening to me give you that promise to you know, hold accountability. And this is what I'm going to create and establish for you. This is what you know that you are contained in, that you are safe in. And... Just having, once again, a legality to it has a different structure within the society we operate, right? Believe me, you and I are both aware marriage is an institution. You and I are both aware some of the roots are in marriage. You and I are both aware that, well, maybe you're not, but I've always thought that there is a very weird energetic signature to marriage in the U.S. There's some, I don't know how to explain it, but there's something weird about it. And I think some people get caught up in the web. I don't know how to describe the frequency of it, but I believe in marriage. I think marriage is a great thing. And I do think that there can be a marriage based off of like understanding between people versus the institution. I myself desire to have marriage like 
legally as well. Um, but that's once again, another conversation for another day. But my point of this is, is that there is a different strength and integrity to the container of marriage if you get legally married. Why? Because the systems that we live in recognize you as a unit. When there are different things and components of like health insurance or medical or like government pay paperwork or finances, inheritance, banks, right? All of these things, if there is not like legal marriage, it can become very complex and there's a separation there. So it does not strengthen the container of what the marriage is, okay? So this is important because this container that he's giving, he's offering you, has a lot of integrity to it, right? So this is a solid house versus having someone that you're connected with. And it's like a situation ship where the container is not clear. There's like osmosis. It's in, it's out. He thinks one thing, you think another, we do this in this instance, and we do this in that instance sometimes, and not always in this one. Do you see how the integrity of the container just isn't as solid because there's, um, there's more fluidity to it. So when we're thinking of abstinence, and marriage, that has a really beneficial component of, once again, respect for the masculine, because there is this, my word is meeting my action. I have followed through as a man. My woman is radiant for what I can do for her. I am showing up. I am contributing, right, in some way. So all of these are very, very strong components. Now, There's something interesting, I'm going to segue, because those are the three components that we need to look at. It's like, okay, so how would we apply those to not having sex? Or excuse me, to those who desire to have sex before marriage. And I should have written them down. So I guess the first thing that I want to share is there has to be a knowing and the woman has to be very clear on what feels safe to her. Part of that safety is knowing exactly what she wants, how she wants it, and then what feels good for her to express. There is no safety without trust. You cannot be safe if you do not trust. If you don't trust that person, you don't feel safe with them. If you don't trust this park, you don't feel safe in the environment. If you don't trust your boss, you don't feel safe in your workplace. Trust is a requirement for feeling safe. So when we're thinking about sex, you know, or having these principles that make abstinence successful in the way where the man and the woman have a reciprocal relationship. They're recognizing each other's power. They are in a strong unit. You can take that right outside of it. And the first thing that you need to know for women is what, how, who are these elements that make you feel safe to express yourself? Because that's that's where your radiance comes from. That's your true radiance expression without a without apology. And you can express yourself sexually. You can express other aspects of yourself within sex, but you have to know what is that containment. It may not be marriage. It may not be commitment, right? But you have to know and you have to be very clear and you have to like have the guts to communicate it. So the man is going to tell you whether or not he can give you that containment. And then you agree. You either say, okay, I'll go along with it or, you know, no, I'm going to look for something else, something different. But I think where women, where this gets tripped up and why I'm like the abstinence is like such a, it's like coming in hard. And it's kind of interesting. I don't know that I'm exposed to all these different videos I'm trying to get comfy is there's an underlying belief that in sex, 
the man is taking from you. So the premise of all these videos and all these relationship things that I'm listening to is to prevent the man from taking something, you need to secure an arrangement to where he gives to you so you can give to him. That's basically what marriage is in the way that it's being promoted online or spoken to, right? Once again, I think this is a very important thing to have reciprocal relationships, to have harmony. That's what I'm here for. But that's basically what it's saying. So you can decide this is what I need to feel good, to feel safe in myself and how I want to connect with other people. But women aren't having sex from that level of consciousness. Women aren't having sex from that um, conviction of knowing. Women aren't having sex in that deep like essence and consciousness of who they are what they want and what feels good and safe to them. And knowing that that containment, they're not leaking energy. They're full. They're fulfilled. They don't feel like they're lacking. They don't feel like a man is taking. They don't feel like they're being taken advantage of, right? But so many women aren't having sex from that place. They are choosing and having sex from like... I want to feel connected. I want to feel validated. I, you know, I want to, you know, feel like I'm like part of something or part of the group or that I'm like desirable or that um, if I'm with this person, it gives me a sense of status, right? Like, so it's like all these tokens that they're looking for. Like if I have intercourse, I get the self-esteem token. If I have intercourse, I get the clout token. If I have intercourse, then I get to be like the main girl token, right? Like it's very odd. <laughs> so in these instances, when the woman is looking for tokens, it becomes transactional. It becomes transactional, whether or not she wants it, whether or not she's intending it. If she's looking for something from him, a token, then the, the conversation on connection and intimacy in its energetic signature, we've lost the consciousness there. We've lost the intimacy. We've lost the harmony. Now we're just having a transaction and it ends up becoming a very emotional transaction. Because they're like, their feelings, they're this, and why, why, aren't, why aren't you here? Why aren't you doing what um, I thought you were going to do? Like, why, why do I still feel this way when I'm not getting the attention, right? Like, there's a lot going on there. So, that to me is a reflection of not trusting yourself are not trusting the environment, the other party. Because if you had trust and if you felt safe to express, there's a freedom there. But if you are saying, okay, if he gives me this, that means this, and I get this, even if it's intangible, right? Like even if it's just like, you know, social clout, then it becomes a conditional dynamic. And those conditions are placed on certain variables. You have to do this, I, and then I have to do this, and I'll only do this if you do this, right? And then it becomes very mental, right? So here's what I want to say. It's very, 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 thousand more varies, important and critical as a woman that you know who you are and you know what you want because the standards are going to come from there. Your selection process is going to come from there. You don't need to get heady about it. You don't need to get mental about it. You don't need to go see what the YouTubers are saying about it. You know, but you have to know 
from you, from your sense of power, from your sense of wholeness, because you'll be able to see very clearly if someone is able to match that, if someone's able to reciprocate to it, if someone's able to add value to you the way you add value to them. Because it's a knowing, right? So then it it doesn't become like so like mental or heady or transactional. You know, you're very clear. You can maintain the state of connection with yourself. You know what containment it looks like there. You know he's a good man, period, based on what you can observe and you can receive and listen and hearing what he doesn't say. You're going to be able to vet him because your knowing already comes with a set of standards that are are within you. So you decide the container of what that is, right? Because you have this sense of knowing and power. From there, it's going to be very clear whether or not the man is able to give you that container to connect with him in. And then you know that you always trust yourself. So you have good judgment on who you're trusting with someone else. And you get to decide that container. And that container can look like marriage. That container can look like waiting until you get a proposal. That container can look like you're a really good friend. I'm living my own life. And sometimes we connect. That container can look like I'm dating a couple other people, but I like you. That container can look like I want to explore and like feel free and different animations and, you know, and sexually. And I know that I got you. You got me. You can decide the container, but the only thing is once again, is the principles of trust and safety, knowing who you are, like knowing where your power comes from, deciding on the container that is with integrity, that's strong, that no one can break, that you're not going to like mend. And then you select accordingly. That's it. Because this is another thing I think is really interesting is, is that if you're a woman and a man respects you, there's a different type of connection. There's a different type of loyalty. There's a different kind of space. Because I think that what ends up happening is online, there's all these teachings of like, Make sure the man respects you by having, you know, really high standards or being really hard to catch. Like all, you know, once again, in some way or another, the woman has to create this distance for the man to travel. Once again, I think that's important. Once again, if there's too much automation, we talked about at the beginning, you're just the Ikea furniture. So I get that. But it's like they're saying, okay, you know, stay far away from him here, right? So he works to get to know you. And then on the other side, like be really sweet and like super cute and like kind of do the baby doll and like have that like really happy feeling and just like the wow and the hero complex of like, thank you so much. And like this world is a really scary place. Can you help me? And like these, so it's, to me, this is what I'm hearing. And this is what I'm noticing that the respect that the woman is being taught is to create the distance, right? I'm hard to get, I'm not always going to text you back, can't have sex until your marriage, right? Like these sort, whatever your like distance is. Then on the other side, it's like, you know, be really like sweet and like blah, 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 blah. So this is really interesting because there's respect happening in both, in both places where if there is effort made there is respect here, right? Like the man is respecting himself as he's coming to you. And then the man respects you for like holding a certain standard, right? On this end where you're just like, kind of like the sweet, like, you know, the big eyes, there's something where he can show up. He can be that guy. He can be the man, but it's like, he doesn't respect you as much, but he respects himself. 
he respects that he's able to do these things. He's able to show up. He's able to help and provide for you in that way. So in this end, it's more like he respects the standard. He respects that you can hold the standard, right? But there's something very different when you as a woman, he respects you. Not just the standard, not just him respecting himself. He respects you. And in that position, anything related to connecting to intimacy, the sex before marriage, sex after marriage, right? Like whatever that containment is, you know that he's going to show up in character. He's going to show up in honesty and integrity. He's going to listen to you. He's going to be respectful of you. He's going to do all the the kind things for you but it's not based on like here you have to do this 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 and then you can have access to me mm -mm. it's not like oh i'm so glad you're here oh i haven't seen you in so long right like because then it's like he okay he feels like he's good he feels like he's that guy but there's a very different element when a man respects you and that is, I feel like I'm going to have to do another video. I think the key to having relationships, connections, intimacy, and sex outside of abstinence, but maintaining those qualities that are found within abstinence. Um, and then from there, once again, you can decide. You decide who, how, how you want to play it. That's totally up for you. I'm just here to offer this train of thought, because I do think that it can be done and it can be done well, and it can be done in a good state of health and in a proper state of consciousness. But right now people aren't connecting, relating or having sex that way. So I think a very simple, easy teaching is saying, don't do that, get, do this instead, wait till you're married. But I don't think that they're talking about the principles of the abstinence and the marriage properly to really translate to people who aren't connecting with that. And um, and maybe that's something you decide you aren't interested in and you're like, that boat has sailed, Eleanor. <laughs> like, um, but it's me just wanting to give you a reminder that truly like the answer and the solutions to things or that people want to give you or are giving you or teaching you it's not actually that thing that thing is always a symbol for something else marriage is simply a symbol for a containment of integrity that things can bloom from that's all marriage is a symbol for that's the ideal of it abstinence is a symbol for integrity and respect in having a reciprocal relationship. So that's what I want to remind you is, is that when you're listening to things and teachers, it's not like, it's not just, it's not the answer. The solution is always symbolizing something else. There's an underlying frequency. There's an underlying tone. There's an underlying transmission. And so I'm explaining this in terms of like the principles, because that's what's underlying these teachings and these ideas. But you don't have to be the gingerbread cookie to just go <laughs> like, you know, the cookie cutter thing to just go be in it. You can do it your own way. You can do it in a way that matches you, but you can learn and listen and absorb the principles that brought them to that conclusion so you can apply them to your experience. Okay. Been thinking about this one for a while. I'm sure there's more to say. Um yeah, there's links below. No, I love you. My name is Eleanor. And as always, just some thoughts.